Hello, it's uh, Paul Beck with the Gain, uh, still without Shackleton. Haven't been able to uh, drum up my uh, sidekick. Uh, he's, uh, I don't know, I think he's pro under protesting being uh, uh, nailed by the shark uh, the other day. Doesn't like sharks. He does like water. You know, often if the water's dripping, he'll just go up with his paw and he'll uh, bat away at it. But anyway, I'm continuing my discussions on the climate, on climate, on the game of risk, right? And how the game of risk is, is becoming reality for people around the world. Doesn't matter where you live. You know, we're all part of the climate casino. We can all be hit by, you know, weird and, and uh, unprecedented and freak um, weather events due to our new climate. So I was talking about um, the hailstorm in Guadalajara and how the hail is, can be formed. And in Guadalajara, the hailstones weren't huge. Um, they were, um, but there were just so many of them. They, it hailed for so many hours during the night that it left, uh, it dumped over three feet, uh, a, 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 over three feet accumulated on the ground in the city of Guadalajara. So residents woke up to that. So this is an interesting schematic showing the, you know, we've got our, we've got our storm here. We've got the hail formed. Um, and, uh, you know, very, very strong convective updrafts. And the stronger the updrafts, the larger the hail can be. So hail, um, BB pellets, peas, you need 24 km miles per hour updraft or 40 kilometers roughly. Um, if you get stronger updrafts, 35 mile an hour, you can get marbles, 38 dimes, 40 pennies quarters and so on. You can get right up to softballs if the updraft is 103 miles an hour. Grapefruit, if it's 98 miles an hour. It's funny, the grapefruits I get are actually bigger than softballs, so I'm not sure this is the best uh, view. Why would teacup people put, you know, some of these choices here, like hen's egg teacup. Um, I mean, people are thinking, how big is a teacup? People don't sit down and drink tea in teacups. I guess that should be coffee cup. Now, I don't know baseball, tennis ball, you know, these things. So the stronger and stronger the updraft speed in miles per hour, the larger the hail can be. In this case, um, in Guadalajara, the updrafts, were, it wasn't the strength of the updrafts creating huge hail size, which is, you know, extreme hail events are usually huge, uh, you know, sizes of hail versus long duration. But in this case, it was a long duration. It was much smaller updrafts, but they were sustained over long periods of time, allowing huge amounts of hail to be uh, dumped. Okay, so Guadalajara, smaller hail, but in huge quantities. This can happen when the storm's moving slowly. Water loading, meaning it contains significant amounts of moisture, weakening the updraft acceleration by the water mass weighing down upon it as it rises, and the wet bulb freezing levels low enough for the very moist updraft to form hail, which doesn't spend much as much time as much time in the freezing region, so it forms smaller but very prolific, prolific numbers of hailstones. So that's the case that happened, and of course, you know the the free the wet bulb freezing level was low, right, relative to the great height, you know, about a mile high of the of of the city. Okay, um, anyway, this is an excellent um, discussion by Nick on, you know, the meteorology that led to this, this freak event. Okay, so let's move on to some of these other events. So the June 19 heat wave in France, um, a report came out. So, of course, we know all the records that were set, you know, long duration heat wave, widespread over lots of Europe. I talked in detail about how um, there, there was a very strong ridge of the jet streams, which went all the way from the Sahara Desert over into Europe, and how that the Mediterranean was heating up and giving more water vapor, adding the, so the dry moist air, the, the very, very hot, dry, not dry moist, <laughs> the very, very hot Saharan Desert air crossed over the rapidly warming Mediterranean Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, and picked up all this moisture and then carried this, this hot, this air that was very, very hot and laden with moisture 
then went into Europe. And the big risk factor in the future is when the Mediterranean Sea, sea surface temperature goes to near 35 degrees Celsius, then that will create uninhabitable conditions north of it along the coast because of the wet bulb temperature being over 35 degrees Celsius. So anyway, this report, which is well worth, uh, look, you can just Google this article and you can find the report. Um, and some of the summary uh, conclusions of this were, you know, every heat wave occurring in Europe today is made more likely and more intense by human-induced climate change. How much more depends very strongly on the event definition, the location, season, intensity, and duration. Okay, uh, huge health impacts. Um, lar large increase in the temperature of these heat waves. And their, the return period currently, such an event is estimated to occur with a return period of 30 years, but similarly frequent heat waves would have been, would likely have been about four degrees Celsius cooler a century ago. So the intensity of the heat wave is um, occurring, these intense heat waves are occurring at least 10 times more frequently today than a century ago. Climate models have systematic biases, um, but they do simulate an increase in probability of a factor of 2 to 20. Heat waves are deadly, although this is not readily visible at the time. Okay, there's a, okay, um, it also affects the aging populations more. Urbanization adds to the urban heat island effect, changing structures in society, levels of preparedness. The full impact is only known after, uh, after a few weeks when the mortality figures have been analyzed. Okay, uh, normally heat waves in France are midsummer, and this one was earlier, so it affected school days and professional activities and so on. Okay, so there's a, so there's a very good analysis of, of this heat wave um, and the unlike, this is some different cities and the uncertainties and unlikelihoods and probabilities and stuff. All of the details are, are in this report, highly recommended. Okay, so what else has happened in the climate casino? Flood apocalypse in eastern Siberia kills five, maroons 9,919. Okay, so we're getting extreme weather events. We're getting, you know, these strong ridges going into the far north, and they're carrying lots of heat. And then there's also lots of, you know, the hot air is also carrying up lots of water vapor. The water vapor condenses and we're getting torrential rain events, monsoonal-like events in the far north. So this is an example. I've talked about the Arctic monsoon, you know, in previous videos quite a while ago. This is this, the case where we're getting uh, monsoons up in the Arctic. And this is in the city of Irkutsk which you know where it is from because it's one of the prominent um, countries in the game of risk, Irkutsk. Okay, this is some water crossing a highway um, from a you know, river and just pictures. I mean, these pictures, are, we're becoming so used to these t sort of pictures of, of flooding pictures, you know, of cities and buildings underwater. Okay, so happening everywhere, including the far north. Wildfires burning across the Arctic Circle in June. Unprecedented. More than 100 wildfires in the Arctic Circle released 50 megatons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere in June. And they're still burning through July. So you can see different regions. Um, you know, lots of, lots of uh, smoke, of course. Lots, lots of ash going up, covering the white ice surfaces. Um, okay, and just go to... Google Earth Null School, look up chemistry, look up CO2 and SO2 and particulate, <clears throat> PM, um, PM10, PM1.5, um, etc. And you can see the particulate, which is coming up from the fires, and track when the fires began and, and uh, see that they're ongoing. Okay, um, so while we're up in the great north, um, we need to continue, we need to not fail to mention the, La the Alaskan heat wave, baked, baked Alaskan. Okay, all these records have been set in Alaska, record high temperatures. We're talking about, you know, high 80s to 90 degrees Celsius, or Fahrenheit, not Celsius, good. 
that would be that would be worse. Um, but these very 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 high temperatures up in Alaska, and uh, you know, warming the Bering Strait, uh, lots of people out on the beaches, um, you know, lots of animals um, being threatened. So puffins in this case st starving. The fish they eat migrated north with the rising sea temperatures. They have no more food and kaput. Okay, uh, this was a positive note in the recently. Restoring forests forest could capture two-thirds of the carbon humans have added to the atmosphere. Okay, so we, we need to talk about planting trillions of trees in order to have a global scale effects on on sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. This is would fall under the regime of carbon dioxide removal, okay? Who can object to planting trillions of trees? One of the problems is, is a lot of these tree planting um, uh, efforts have uh, high mortality rates. So the Chinese green wall, where they just plant millions and millions of trees, billions of trees to keep the desert from encroaching, they only have a 15% survival rate of those trees, okay? So there are some methods that our people are looking at um, to increase, greatly increase the survival rate of the trees. There's no good planting the trees if they don't root and survive long term. They, you know, and uh, you can get benefits quickly from planting lots of trees because young trees suck up more CO2 out of the atmosphere than older, more established trees. Species extinction, um, you know, huge numbers of species at risk. You know, obviously, you know, the, the uh, changing weather patterns, changing temperature patterns completely stresses uh, species in the environment, forcing them to migrate, you know, forcing species extinctions. This was a very interesting event. Um, Record-breaking seaweed bloom stretches from West Africa to Mexico. Satellite images show the bloom to be 5,000 miles long. So this is... Um, this is uh, sargassum, which is a type of floating seaweed. Okay, most seaweed is anchored and rooted to the ground, uh, to the seafloor, so you have to have relatively shallow water, but this stuff floats around. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, so there was just too much of it produced, so it's rotting in the sea where it is now. Um, and so it has affected... Um, Tourism in Mexico, for example, where it's washing up on local be be beaches and things. But it's, it's extracted huge amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere. Okay, all of this climate change bad news barrage um, is triggering eco-anxiety, psychologists say. So there's an HBO series, Big Little Lies, and this, um, this kid, Amabello, had a panic attack while learning about climate change. So she went and hid in the closet. I think that there are times when all of us want to go and hide in the closet. Okay, um, you know, so this eco-anxiety, anxiety, grief, and despair about the state of the environment is becoming a big thing. There was a Yale survey in December 2018. 70% of Americans are worried about climate change, 29% are very worried, and 51% feel helpless. When you feel helpless, then you, um, that's when you get you know, these, the depression and negative effects. Despite these striking statistics, most people don't realize how widespread eco-anxiety is, one psychologist said, hidden under the sur surface. So, um, okay, so it's becoming a, a real deal, a big thing. Okay, the, in California, the heat, a heat wave, it cooked the mussels in their shells on the shore. Largest die-off in 15 years. Um, these are scores of dead, dead mussels were on the rocks at Bodega Bay, California. And basically biologists looked at it and they'd never seen anything like this before. The, the shells were gaping, op, gaping and scorched. The meats were thoroughly cooked within the mus mussels. Um, you know, um, the, the mussel beds, um, the rock-bound mollusks could have been experiencing temperatures above 100 Fahrenheit at low tide, that they, as they literally roasted in their shells. Okay, so, and that's my last blog. Okay, so in summary, um, we're playing a huge game of risk and uh, we're losing. Okay, thanks for listening.